I love you. Gentle folk and ladies and men, we're glad to have you here again. Gentle folk and ladies and men, please won't you just come on in. Yes, gentle folk and ladies and men, he's a hefty, hefty poo. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're a hefty, hefty poo. I am the green traveler from Gorsh. And I'm the face of Sleon. Uh, that, yeah, the, that was, you pulled that off a lot better than the Robin Hood one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually tried on this one. <laughs> uh, this is a podcast about movies and TV called Green and Faceless on the Couch. Welcome to the Disney playlist. It is, uh, yeah, yes. talking about Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, yes. Guess, guess what Pooh character I am? What what poo character am I? None uh, of them because yeah. I don't. Rem- I'm just okay. making this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I, I guess you could be trying to do Gopher, but he's a little more slurry on the s's. Yes, I can't yeah. do that. I wish I could do that whistle slur on the s's like he does. I wish <laughs> I could just do that on command. <laughs> Unless I can do it on accident sometimes. I used to have a bigger gap between my teeth, so I used to be able to. But that's that's kind of grown together since yeah. then, since I was a kid. Oh well. We're talking well, Winnie the Pooh, everybody. Winnie the Pooh. If you don't know Pooh, he's a bear. But he's not just he's not a Pooh. bear. He's not Poop, no. And he goes by Pooh instead of Winnie. So, whatever. Um, yeah, and but- he lives under the <laughs> he lives in the, under the sign of Mr. Sanders. <laughs> yes, he he lives in an oak tree under the name Mr. The- Sanders. That's what it says. <laughs> yep, and I like how they also have to specify it. It's like, and that means that he lives under a sign that says Mr. Sanders. <laughs> yes, yes, and I I love that the narrator is Bagheera, which like this there is like a a, a lot of call to. The Jungle Book in this one, too, with the book. But Disney does the book a lot. They say, once upon a book, we pulled it off the shelf. But I mean, honestly, if, if like, looking at all the other movies and how they've handled the book, like, the, the aspect that all these come from books and sometimes using the book as a storytelling yeah. method, I honestly don't think anybody, like, any film's done it better than Winnie the Pooh I so far in the Disney playlist. I agree. Uh, it, yeah. It was at, great. At the very least in Disney movies. Like, I, I can't – I mean, right. Princess Bride does it pretty well. Yeah, Princess um, Bride, I think, does it the best of all films. Yeah. <laughs> but but in, in regards to the Disney playlist so far, this one's nailed it. This is like – Yeah. Secret review of Princess Bride. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, someday we'll do like a, a oh, whole sure. deep dive on sure. that. I feel like that's one of those films that needs a deep dive. We can't put that with any other film. We got to yeah. just talk just Princess talk Bride. that. Bring bring out the bio of Andre the Giant. <laughs> but yeah, just with, with with the narrating of not just the narrator, but the narrating of Winnie the Pooh, it's fucking phenomenal. Like the the just how they tell this story is just these stories is just enjoyable, even for an adult. Like as a kid, this was probably my favorite movie for a very long time. Yeah, I remember my brother and I had to have watched this, uh, you know, enough to piss my parents off. Like it had to be. And there are so many, so many sayings and like just song phrases or just lines or quotes or whatever that are part of my brother's, uh, brother and my daily vernacular. Like we did the tut tut, it looks like rain probably every fucking time it got cloudy. We were like, tut tut, looks like rain. Oh. You know what I didn't realize is how many Winnie the Pooh movies they've made. They've made a lot of Winnie the Pooh movies. Like yeah. searching it on Disney Plus, I was like, "Oh shit! Do I remember the actual title of this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the uninitiated, it is uh, the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh from 1977. Savan, 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 Savan. Yes, it is a beautiful, beautiful little movie based off of the uh, novel by A. A. Milne, which I I know. A- I feel like a long time ago I knew a lot about the stories like these were written uh that these are based off of. I've never right. actually read them. 
But I just mm-hmm. know that he like wrote it for his kid, which was his kid named Christopher Robin. I can't remember, but like his uh, kid was named Chris, maybe. I just I don't know uh, that part. I did just a brief overview of the names of the stories and and the first illustrations we have. The illustrations of that we have are from E. H. Shepard, and Disney does a pretty good job of incorporating that. Yeah. If you you I mean you just can look up old poo old winnie the pooh <laughs> illustrations and there's a you know a whole bunch of them <laughs> yeah, but you could also look up old poo illustrations you could, if you want but you might you, you could, might get some I, weird images <laughs> <laughs> i just ima- i i didn't want to but i just imagined the two girls one cop but in a that sketchy like you know, just <laughs> flat, no color. Oh no! Just just hatch marks. <laughs> I knew I knew there would be poo jokes in this episode, but yeah, I wasn't but expecting no. two girls, one cup to be tied in with Disney somehow. <laughs> uh, I oops. Secret secret review of Two Girls One Cup. Yeah, we totally have not watched it. No, totally. Definitely weren't attracted by it. No, absolutely. Anyways, not anyhow. <laughs> not not to, uh, not to yuck on somebody's yum out there. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the first collection of stories of Winnie the Pooh came out in 1926 and was called Winnie the Pooh, but it was hyphenated. How exciting! And when di- <laughs> and then Wait, uh, like hyphenated as in like Winnie hyphen the hyphen poo. Yes. Oh, yes. that would irritate me. <laughs> yes. So when Walt Disney uh, li- did the licensing for the film rights, they unhyphenated it because <laughs> they were like, "This is dumb as shit." <laughs> Sorry, AA <laughs> Milne. <laughs> Uh, he's dead he ain't listening <laughs> and Ewan McGregor is his son I think you know cause that, that recent Winnie the Pooh movie or Christopher, it was called Christopher Robin I think you remember that? yeah yeah Ewan Christ- McGregor played- his, yes his name was Christopher Robin and but I can't remember if he was playing the author's son or what was going on at all yeah because that, that's, that's where I'm confused about it cause I can't remember cause I know I've read about it but it's like I can't remember if he wrote it for his son or if he wrote it about his son because right. the, the the characters are all his son's stuffed animals. Well, then Christopher Robin must be his son. Right, but I, I just can't remember if his son was named Christopher Robin. I can't remember I if see. it was that that personal, like if he basically just used his son's own name as uh, the main character for his stories. His son, Christopher Robin Milne. It's only Shit. a click away. It's only a click away, Greeny. <laughs> oh see i feel like that would really fuck with the kid like yeah well we see what happened to you and mcgregor in that movie i don't remember that movie with. that well i, don't really I remember didn't i remember, remember enjoying it. yes i do remember liking it and you know live action Pooh bear that's yeah you movie. know what we'll do someday we'll put paddington bear paddington bear 2 and winnie the, uh, and christopher robin together that way we have just a three a three bear threesome there <laughs> three i mean it, it's a two bear a two okay, bear threesome how about pa- how about paddington bear and <laughs> country bears oh, you- <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll do it <laughs> we'll do it <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually excited uh, not to not to keep straying away from Winnie the Pooh, but I'm actually excited someday to see Paddington Bear because, yeah. like, I hear everybody talk about how much they surprisingly loved it, and I'm just like, there's no way I'm going to like this there's movie, no but everybody like fucking it. loves it, and everybody's like, it's an actually great movie, and I'm just like, all right, it, it's on my list now. I have to watch okay. it someday, I guess. Well, how about that? We'll do it in, uh, we'll do it for Valentine's Day. <laughs> 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 a furry threesome. <laughs> Specifically oh, no. bear furries. <sighs> okay, so... Berries? Uh, there's just some other berries? stuffed animals and uh, fairies? What? I said I said bear furries and I was like, are they just called berries? Berries? 
I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if there are different sects of, of furries. Like, you know, I mean, I know there are, but like, I wonder if there's oh, different names yeah. for each different, you know, it's like, well, I'm only in the wolves. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. You're, you're I'm a, a fee lion. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. Back to Winnie the Pooh. Back to Winnie the Pooh. I'm so sorry. I keep derailing us there. Yeah, this is. This a, won't be like this Robin is a Hood. Really charming show. <laughs> I feel like we have thrown so much sex on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who brought up two girls one I cup. I didn't mean to. I, I, well, it, I didn't want it to be in my mind, anyways, and I just shared it. And I maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'm a bad bad You're- man. Yeah, you're like the only way to get this myself. out of my mind is to spread it into the mind oh of others oh my god it's gonna be on the internet <laughs> no don't do that we're cutting that part out <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's um, fair <laughs> but Winnie the Pooh Winnie the Pooh as you were saying he he wrote the uh, the first collection Winnie hyphen the hyphen Pooh that's right uh, and then uh, it was followed by the house at Pooh Corner in twenty eight. Nice. Um, and originally, his name was like Edward Bear in this short story that he wrote called "When We Were Very Young" in nineteen twenty four. And there was even more Pooh stories in "Now We Are Six, and hmm. all four volumes were uh, illustrated by E. H. Shepard. There you go. Nice. That's what I know about this. Disney got the rights in 61. Fucking fast. So Disney would definitely was like, Walt himself, I mean, was definitely involved in, in right. wanting this made. By the time it was made, of course, as we've mentioned, he was dead. Yeah. But it's nice knowing that, you know, because cause, uh, as I was telling the uh, the faceless Leon before this, I have a... I feel bad. I can't. I, I can't give a shout out because I can't remember what the website is. But like, I've been reading an article about the different eras of Disney, you know, to help with the research of this. Right. And they were talking about the Bronze Era being, you know, a huge decline era for for Disney. Uh, you know, without Walt's imagination, they were kind of floundering. They were putting out darker stories and less fantasy. And it was just, and the the writer of this article is like the one exception was Winnie the Pooh, which is like very loyal story and beautiful and heartwarming. And it was like it's very clear that the writer was just like this is clearly my favorite of the era. The others <laughs> suck. <laughs> <laughs> but like I totally I could totally agree with him though because it's like uh I I I I didn't look too far ahead at what movies were in this era. I just wrote them down. And then when I looked it up and saw that the next movie was Winnie the Pooh, I was like fucking jumping for joy. I was like I can't wait to get home and watch this thing. I'm so excited. It's my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite movies. Like it's it's easily not having completed the Disney playlist yet of all the Disney films. I do think it's going to be hard to even knock this one out of the top three for me because, like, as I said, this was one of my favorite fucking films as a kid. Right. It was so enjoyable. I got to say, this is uh, the first time I watched it in a really long time. It is just so good. I mean, I was cracking up. There was one that I just couldn't stop laughing to. I believe it was when Pooh was like, is this next story all about me? And the narrator's like, no, Pooh, it's about Tigger. And, he, and he's like, oh. Oh. <laughs> but he's like, but you're in it. And he's like, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved, that's that's one of the things I loved is like the back and forth between Pooh and the narrator. Like how the narrator interacts with everybody is just enjoyable. Yeah, and you don't really you is. don't even question it because of the format with the book. Which we'll get more into, but my uh, my favorite joke that had me rolling around was there's a moment where they're in Owl's house on a blustery day. Yeah. And, you know, and the, the owl lives up in a tree like owls do. He's got a nice house up there. And as the tree rocks with the wind, everything in Owl's house is like sliding back mm-hmm. and forth. And Pooh, Pooh is addicted to honey. If you don't know anything about Winnie the Pooh, he is a meth addict for honey. Yes, like he is. He, is, he needs it. And Al has a uh, jar of honey there, and you know he allows Pooh. He's like, "Yes, you can have some of my my honey, of course, Pooh." And so Pooh is trying to get at the honey, but it keeps sliding away from him because of the the wind rocking the treehouse. Piglet's there as, as well, of course. 
And as the house moves and shifts everything back towards Pooh, here comes Piglet and the, the honeypot. And it, through a, a hilarious circumstances, it, it basically, basically becomes Piglet shoving the honeypot onto Pooh's face. Like, <laughs> and the, the, the pot just gets stuck on Pooh's face. And you just hear Pooh from within the honeypot go, Thank you, Piglet. <laughs> it's just how he how he delivers that thank you line, and it, and it just being like muffled by the pot, but like you clearly know he's very happy that it happened, even though it was very probably a painful instant. It was just I don't know. Pooh's Pooh's just demeanor in general, yeah, just filled me with like a, a bubbly it's, bubbly happiness. It's not what I remembered. He's he's a lot more. Like, he is not super smart, <laughs> I'll say. No. But he's a lot more clever than, yeah. than I remember. This interpretation well, is... A, uh, he's a lot more I mischievous, think, too, than yeah. I remember. Right. I think it was Piglet who said, uh, for a bear with no brain, you're rather intelligent, or something like that. You're rather smart. Yeah. It was like it, it, and it's true. Like he's not, he's not smart, but at the same time, he does just have some saying, some quotes that he'll just d- deliver, and you're just mm-hmm. like, "Whoa, that was incredibly profound." You're yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, he's he's he is very wise. He is uh, very wise, very chas- charismatic bear with a high constitution and a really low intelligence <laughs> and. Probably low on the dexterity, and also you probably don't strength. want him in your D and D party. You probably <laughs> don't, but he'd be a great, great cleric. Just That'd be nice, gives yeah, you, yeah. Gives you big hugs. Except That's he'd probably so be too busy. Christopher Robin. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be too busy eating honey, though, to actually heal you. Yes. <laughs> That's his main character flaw. But the uh, this movie, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, is a very simple story. It's an anthology of stories. Uh, as we mentioned, it's it's in a book format. So you see, you know, it's like that classic Disney. The camera zooms in on the book. The book opens up and then the story starts tell- being told. All of a sudden it's animated. But the difference here is that when they zoom into the book, they keep the book there. You know, I mean, like, obviously right. the book goes away and they go into the story, but, like, they'll come back out to the book and flip the page and go to chapter three or... The book and then the is narrator, the setting. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the narrator will constantly be saying something along the lines of, back on page 17, when he was right. here, and, and you know, he, he walked over onto page 18, and that's where we find, you know, Eeyore's house or whatever, some shit like that. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of Alice in Wonderland a little bit for that reason. Yeah, a little bit. And it's it's enjoyable, too, because as you said, uh, who is the artist? Was it E.H. Shepard? E.H. E. H. Shepard. Okay. Yeah, like you'll, you'll see his illustrations there, and then they'll come to life. They'll become animated, and you'll zoom into that moment. And I, I, I assume those were his original illustrations in the book that they're um, going into. Uh, at least some of them. Some of them might have been originals. Who knows? But, like... It's it's a very fascinating way to tell the story, and it keeps it very. I don't know. It keeps it moving fast. It, the pace is really enjoyable because they're all just a bunch of short stories, you know, different chapters, different tales in this book, and it's it's just a. And the narrator's having fun with the characters. The yes. characters know he's there, except maybe Christopher Robin does. I don't know if Christopher Robin ever interacts yeah. with the narrator. Well, Christopher Robin. Oh. I mean, you could argue he has a um, a strong imagination but he might just be you know he he might be hallucinating i i don't know he could be yeah he, he could be, be on like child in him yeah maybe yeah <laughs> Take, taking them opioids for the kids <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh let's see like let's just i guess let's talk some of the tales because it's it's fun to I mean, they do a great job at just introducing all the characters. You know, all the characters have their own little moments. You know, there's, you know, obviously we've talked about Pooh, the main focus, but not all the tales are about him. Like, as you said, there's right. a tale completely about Tigger, who is a bouncy tiger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He all, and I don't. I, bouncy, bouncy, fun, 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 fun. Bouncy, 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 flouncy, fun, 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 fun. You got to remember the flouncies in there. Oh, uh, I, I, 
Um, what a ah, uh, just fire <laughs> me. I quit the show. You uneducated loon. I'm done. I don't know Winnie the Pooh songs, which is a <laughs> shame. I'm sure I used to know it much better. Uh, Tinker right. was always my favorite. He's not even ha- in half of the movie. No, yeah, he's not really. And but he he was one of mine. I didn't like him as much because he is a bit of an annoyance. Mm. You know, he he's all about having fun, which is fine. That's great. But he does constantly wreck havoc and it's the it, i don't know as as an individual who does enjoy a semblance of control he was utter chaos and i was just yeah. like i love you but you gotta calm down kid <laughs> <laughs> rabbit agrees with you who is a rabbit yeah i don't but i don't always agree with rabbit i gotta be no, honest i don't always agree with rabbit rabbit that was uh kind of, that was pretty mean how rabbit tries to deal with it uh and yeah uh but it it all you know th- this is a happy go lucky film so it all ends for the better it, it's all right. all good and rabbit is like a stingy you know he's not really a grouch but he he I, enjoys his space yes he you know, enjoys he is, his space yeah. he enjoys order um but i i stingy might not be the right word because he does invite winnie to lunch knowing full well that he stocked he d- full of honey, and he does the not. Bear is he mad. does not invite. He does not invite <laughs> Winnie. Winnie pokes his fucking head in and goes, "Hello, are you having lunch?" And the Rabbit's like, "Well, I guess if you if you're here, you can definitely." He, he's he's the kind of guy who just doesn't know how to say no. That's yeah. You know, he doesn't know That's how to just, like he's get out of my house in that way. Like he yeah. He's concerned about his stores, but at the same time, he'd give you anything. Uh, yeah. See, I feel like I feel like as a kid, I wanted to grow up to be like Winnie, but I sadly grew up to be more like uh, Eeyore and Rabbit mixed. Oh. <laughs> Where it's just like there's a little bit of that, you know, that sadness, and it's just like, oh, the world sucks. Uh, like, oh. uh, but Eeyore mentioning is a Eeyore, donkey. yeah, depressed tailless donkey. Yeah, I mean, he's got a tail. He's just got you got knack it on with a nail, but. It's 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 there, but you know he's he he will just be happy that we noticed him, you know yeah. that we mentioned him. I, I, my for brother noticing. That was one of the things my brother and I would say all the time. Is if somebody would ask us, "Is like, and how was your day?" It's just like, "Oh, it was okay. Thanks for noticing me." Yeah, <laughs> it's just that kind of shit. We would always we would always do Eeyore. I fucking love Eeyore. <laughs> Eeyore is one of my favorites, but just because it's just like I feel sad for him. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Eeyore, people love you. Come on. Let's see. Who else? We talked Piglet a little bit. Piglet's a, obviously a little pig. Uh, he gets blown around by the wind a lot. He's yeah. always in danger. That's how they ended up at Al's house. Yeah, he's a he's a stuttery, a bit of a stutterer, kind of like Porky Pig, but not as bad. Oh, I don't know if we mentioned Al... Is a saber tooth tiger. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a throw you for a loop, wouldn't it? <sighs> yeah, they're not they're not intelligent with their names, pretty much, because there's oh, the, another character is Kanga and her uh, son Rue, and that's yes. just absolutely enjoyable. You know, I feel like maybe we've done a little bit of a disservice because we usually give the actors names. Uh, but I do want to mention that Rue is played by Clint Howard, he, uh, Ron Howard's little brother, that, and he's in like he's like in four different everything. Star Trek shows. But also I was gonna say everything. he's in like everything, he's but he's everything. always like he's a supporting. He's a legend. He's a fucking yeah. legend. He just he has a, a a specific look about him that you see him. You're yes. like Clint Howard. That's Clint Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I feel like I see Ron Howard. I'm just like I know who that. Oh, it's Ron Howard. That's right. But every time right. I see his brother, I'm like Clint. That's Clint Howard. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah, Mandatory like I Clint remember Howard. watching like the first time I watched that Star Trek episode, uh, or uh, I had forgotten about it. But then I like it, it had to dawn on me again because it was so strange to see little baby Clint Howard in Star Trek. <laughs> Uh, but I remember being like, I think that's Clint Howard. And you're like, it does look like him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is like the, the problem with Clint Howard is he's in everything 
and I never remember the movies he's in. Yeah. I know I've seen him in a lot of movies, but I can't uh, – right now, off the top of my head, aside from the movie you, movies you just – or the Star Trek that you just talked about, I can't think of another thing that he's in. But I know yeah. I've seen him in a lot of shit. Yeah, he's I, I in always a, a lot of comedies. And yeah. he's in a, some horror movies too and – He's in a whole bunch of shit. I feel the same yeah. way now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you were saying, with there, there are a lot of actors to name, and I feel like we've named a lot of them in past episodes because this is kind of where Disney is this, just reusing everything. That is fair. But I feel like this is where they this is where they got them all right. Yeah, we've mentioned it before. Sterling Holloway. Oh, that's yeah. I, I know him as P- Winnie the Pooh. That was the iconic. And watching all of the movies that he had voices in before this was kind of fun, but every time I heard it, I was just like, Winnie, there he is. There and here we are. Is. We're finally at Winnie the Pooh. Oh, it is, oh, it is just the – it's the perfect voice for this character. I and I mean, a lot of them are all perfect. They are. But but Winnie is the one that stands out because it's just like that is that is his masterpiece. That was his magnum opus. I'm sorry, Sterling Holloway, if you didn't if you didn't like this film. I, I feel like he had to, but like Oh man, he, this he's is the so film charming I know him for. Is Winnie. Like why wouldn't he right. have, Yeah. I mean he got to be the I star assume of the he show would. too. Like he's always he's always been a side character to this point. It was the perfect right. casting choice, it really was. Yeah. And and Piglet's enjoyable. I love Piglet writes a note, and it, it includes his stutter in the note because yeah. he signs it Piglet yeah. with like four P's, and I'm just like, oh my god, it's just adorable. It also says, "Help, Piglet dash me." He's such an adorable character, and like. I feel like another reason mentioning the the writing just reminded me of this. Another reason I love this probably as a kid is because, as I said, I was dyslexic, but I didn't really know it. And like this, like everything in this uh, these this movie is like spelled wrong, or the words right. are all taken out of context. Like Piglet lives at a in a you know another treehouse kind of thing, and he lives under a sign that says that you know it. it Probably used to say trespassers will be, you know, who who knows what the next part was, shot or removed or anything like that. But like, what's the the sign has fallen apart over the years, and all it says is trespassers will. And he's like, oh, that was my my uh, was his grandpa, his grandfather. He's like, that was my my or maybe it was an uncle. But he's just like, that was my uncle's name, you know, trespassers will. Yeah, my mom or uh, my, my whatever, my family member, we all just called him T.W. It was even shorter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's it's an adorable. It's like, I, I don't think I realized that as a kid. But like seeing like all these signs misspelled or being used yeah. out of, uh, in a different meaning, it, it probably was just saying to my, my stupid, I mean, I'm not stupid, my, my, my dyslexic brain a little better because I was just like, oh, right. I can understand this. Also, like Wednesday, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that was good. Because like, it's not and, and Wednesday. Day. It, it did make me think, like, why don't we say Wednesday? Like, it's not that, it's not harder to say. <laughs> why do, why don't we say Wednesday? Yeah. It's not as, it's because not it's Wednesday. any harder. <laughs> Yeah, but who decided? Yeah, Where in our timeline did someone decide it's Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Well, it's like it's like sherbet and sherbet. Like it, it's spelled sherbet, but everybody says sherbet, and it's like no, it's sherbet. It's one yeah, of those things where it's that, just like, why do we do this? Just I, I don't know. That might be a French thing, and maybe well, Wednesday comes from Norse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's but, Odin's day. I know, I know, but why is it Wednesday? Okay, moving on. Sorry. Well, it's, it's just a language thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I do too. We'll we'll start a we'll start a new spin-off podcast. It's just a language podcast. Etymology for wizards. Yeah, there's a shit ton of those already out there, but we'll just toss ours into the boat where it's just like two idiots research food. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is just another two idiots watch movies and talk about it. <laughs> but now it's about words. Of those. <laughs> ours is special. Ours is special. Isn't it couch potatoes? If you think ours is special, go on down to patreon.com slash faceless. Check out the marvelous tears there. 
Wow, that that felt like I was selling my soul a little bit, but please, no, I, we do we we do need your support, and we appreciate we it. Do. Thank you. But uh, to get close to wrapping up here with Winnie the Pooh, because it's going to be a long playlist episode, I know it. <laughs> uh, but like one one like to talk further about the little stories, you know, we've already talked the Tigger one. There's the uh, there's a rain episode or uh, like story where the whole oh yeah 100 acre woods is getting flooded by rain that's very fun there's the heffalumps nightmare which uh a long time ago we talked about in dumbo i talked right. about how there was a, a recurring nightmare of mine that involved dancing elephants but i was just like i guess i had to be from dumbo because i couldn't remember it it was the fucking heffalumps i'm pretty sure of it now uh, like yeah i the, forgot that this was it, it was it's almost basically the same song too i swear yeah, because it's it's beware, beware. I don't remember the the song and the yeah but d- Dumbo, it, it, but that's it, it's very similar. I swear. Yeah, it's got to be, and, and the 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 that whole scene is trippy and unnerving, yeah. and it's it's still enjoyable, right. still really fascinating. But yeah, as a kid, I'm pretty sure that's what gave me that recurring nightmare of dancing elephants sitting on me. <laughs> <laughs> Because the heffalumps and the woozles, oh, it's it's oh, man. it's good shit. And I guess now there's uh, a heffalump movie. Oh, oh, okay. Well, like they they find an elephant. I guess I'll give it a chance someday. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely know that I watched. I think they made a show out of Winnie the Pooh too. Yeah, I watched some episodes of that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I I watched a lot of. It got kind of dark. Yeah. <laughs> also, Kingdom Hearts. Like he he's in Kingdom Hearts too, and uh, well, yeah. both of them, all three of them, rather probably all of them. I don't fucking know. I didn't play the side games, right? <clears throat> but anyhow, he like loses his memory. He almost gets like deleted or whatever. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. Yeah, and he does live in a book. That part is kind of fun. I do enjoy that. Yeah, that was I, like I'm not a huge. I'm sorry, people are gonna get mad, uh, it, but I'm not a huge Kingdom Hearts Dude. lover. I I enjoyed the experience that we had playing right. it together. I think as a game, it is way too long winded, and I think the the fighting style. Every time I see the fights, I'm like, I do not feel at all interested in any of this. Like, it, it just looks. I, I enjoy Donald and Goofy's, you know, helping you out. Right. But it's just I don't know the. The, the the story is just way too much. I'm like, all right. I like yeah, the idea uh, a lot. I'm, I'm with you. I am with you. I'm totally in it just to see how they they tangle up all these characters. Yeah. Though I have, I I definitely stopped. I didn't get very far in my Kingdom Hearts three playthrough. But I'll yeah. have to say I liked the Frozen level more than I thought I would have. <laughs> really, you didn't let it go. You weren't just like, fuck this. <laughs> I was really like, oh man, now I have to go through this. But then they made like this ice labyrinth thing and it was pretty cool. <laughs> Didn't they? I, I thought I had heard somebody say that they had the entire Let It Go song. In they Kingdom did. Hearts that part 3. was awful. But uh, thankful, yeah. thankfully it was at the end of my stay there. Did they at least make it skippable? I don't know. I don't know if I those bastards. tried. I think I got up and got a snack. See, like that's my problem with those games. It's just like those games, the Metal Gear Solid games. They just like they think it's gonna be cool to put in a cutscene, and cutscenes are nice. But I'm there to play a fucking game, and then your cutscene goes on for twenty fucking minutes. I'm like, I'm not here to watch a movie. I had like five minutes until I have to get to work. Let me yeah, fucking skip through yeah. this cutscene, and they never let you skip through it. Not the first time. They're like, you have to know the story is important. I'm like, I'll watch it on YouTube later. <laughs> like, get out of here. <laughs> I guess I'll pause and leave the fucking PlayStation running because I better be five minutes late as it is. God damn it. I'm so inconvenienced. <laughs> uh, so closing statements on uh, Winnie the Pooh. Yes. Uh, this I did notice that this is um, one of those that was actually, you know, Wolf, as I said, Wolfgang Reitherman, been a constant director. Uh, this one's co-directed. So Wolfgang co-directed it with John Lounsbury. So I don't know if uh, we're going to see the drop off of Wolfgang, if this is maybe the last film he was part of, or maybe he just had a co-director for this. But if if this is the, his last, and I'll you know recorrect myself in the next episode, he, he ended with a bang because this is one yes, of my favorite fucking true. films of all time. I just, I love this movie so much. I love the characters. 
Winnie the Pooh, easily in the top 10 greatest characters ever created, in my opinion. Like, that's no joke. I'm not fucking kidding about that. I love Winnie the Pooh. Like, he is just, he was my favorite thing as a kid, as a really young kid. Like, he, my favorite thing gets replaced a lot, especially now that I'm an adult and I say that every fucking day. It's like, oh, it's my favorite thing. Well, now it's, it, you know, <laughs> back then it literally was Winnie the Pooh for a solid probably year or two. Like, just loved that character. And I, like, I literally did want, it, like, to grow up to be him. He was just a, a tubby little chubby all stuffed with fluff. Like, I fucking, that was like, yes, please. He's, he's a cuddly. He's cuddly bear, damn it. And I loved yeah. it. And, yeah. And uh, four stars, easily four stars. Like, I love all the stories. I love all the acting. I love everything that happens in this movie. I'm getting worked up just thinking about it. <clears throat> but, yeah, like, easy recommend. If you haven't watched it, watch it. If you got kids who haven't watched it, watch it with them. They'll yeah, almost certainly enjoy it. Definitely. It's so much funnier than I remembered that because the word humor, like you said, went way over my head as a kid. But that just make means that it's rewatchable because I still enjoyed it. It mm -hmm. wasn't my favorite growing up, but now rewatching it, it is almost exactly my style uh, of humor. Right. In Adventures in Valagorn, some of the narrator bits like are just like this. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't even realize, I don't know if this had inspired me or not, but I, I hope that in the later Pooh movies, they don't get rid of that element, but I think they probably do. I feel like they probably did. Yeah, I feel like they became more in the Hundred Acre Woods and less in a book in the Hundred yeah. Acre Woods. Or uh, in the Hundred Acre Woods in a book. Rather. Right. Well, I think I want to give it a face and a half. I really enjoyed it. I think it's uh, well worth watching. And anybody should enjoy it. Agreed. Unless they're a Nazi. You don't think Nazis can enjoy this? No. They have uh, too many different kinds of people commingling yeah i guess there's not much joy in their hearts <laughs> there's not <laughs> <laughs> i'm reading like i'm reading captain america and it's very weird because it's like of all the superhero stories i've ever read they're always like you can't kill don't kill and then captain america is just like nazi bang yeah <laughs> just like, wow, wildly different it's just like fuck these guys are you starting way in the way back because those are the, no no okay honestly those early ones are pretty good like you know yeah. up to when he gets frozen i've read all that i believe i believe it. I'm, I'm interested in those but like i'm just reading the uh the winter soldier storyline right now and it's it's there's a lot of flashbacks to world war ii and it's just it's so funny whenever it's just like oh my god you killed him and he's just like it was a nazi and it was just like oh okay, yeah. <laughs> fair enough <laughs> i just love that that's just like our culture has become it's just like no you can't kill people except for them <laughs> i mean <laughs> i'm just like all right all right but uh that's been the show i you know go out there and watch winnie the pooh because we fucking love it and i love you sterling holloway you're one of my uh favorite voice actors ever specifically be because of winnie the pooh you have a bunch of amazing characters out there but i know he's dead and not listening to this but like <laughs> if I could dedicate this episode to anybody, it's Sterling Holloway. You you shaped a lot of my my love as a kid. So uh, thank you for listening, Couch Potatoes. I have been the Green Traveler from Gorsh, and I have been the Faceless Leon, also on this couch with this this green guy. We talked about his favorite movie, and I'm well, rambling. One of his favorite, not my favorite. Movies. One of yeah, his one of. <laughs> Let's and I and I uh, it it has kind of snuck its way into my heart. I really love all the pooisms. I just I just feel like I didn't praise it enough. Okay, oh, so that was travel, actually it, no, that's the end of the show. Sorry, as as you're you rambling, you it just reminded me that <laughs> I did enjoy. I can delete your goodbye, <laughs> <laughs> but I did enjoy how the humor is just so. Like they, they they don't make a point of it. Like there's a lot of like there's a lot of easy poo jokes where a lot of more modern movies would make a fart or a poo joke and it right. like you know make sure they pause for the you know the parents to laugh or whatever. <laughs> it might even have happened in Christopher Robin. Yeah, probably. But like there, there's a lot of just moments though where they make a poo joke in this that it's just like they they don't have like a a lilt. 
he's a hefty hefty poo <laughs> like that one it's just like it, it's it's funny and it's like as a kid you're probably laughing and enjoying it but at the same time when they make these jokes they're not like giving it a little or anything they're saying it like it's serious it's like yeah. they're not they're not like trying to make it funny it's just funny <laughs> and i love it fucking love it all right sorry safe travel good night <laughs> <laughs> Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. If you like the show, please show your support by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Like, follow, subscribe, wherever you might listen. We also now have a Patreon account. If you feel so inclined to support us in a financial manner, please become a patron by visiting patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. You can also find more information about us on our Facebook account or on the FictionWorks19 Instagram account. Thank you so much for listening.